Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Perry with Premier Guitar here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Exit Inn with the dudes from Power Trip today. I'm very, very excited. Uh, this is Blake Abanez, right? Is that how How's you pronounce going? it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Abanez. Love it. Right on. <laughs> um, I'm excited to do this. I'm actually a huge Power Trip fan. Uh, if you guys haven't heard them, it's all the best things of thrash and hardcore all smashed together and I, I can't get enough of it. So let's start. Let, let's talk about guitars, man. This thing looks scary to play next to you on stage. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh, this is a RR1. Don't know what year it is. I got it used because uh, it's a pretty expensive guitar. Totally. But I just kind of one day was like, I better get the best kind of uh, you know the best model of the guitar I play because you know once you once you play like you know ones that aren't as great or whatever, then you you realize that you know you want to sound the best you can. Totally. So, Pretty and you're doing yeah. a lot of trem work, like you're bending the shit out of those strings, so you, yeah. you're going to need something that's going to stay to it for you. Yeah, I mean, it's just made really well, this custom uh, RR1, it's just got like a really nice fretboard, I think it's ebony, and then, you know, Floyd Rose, which I've always used, it's kind of all I know how to use, but uh, yeah, it's just made really well, it sounds great, and these guitars, uh, at least in my experience, the cheaper ones tend to... Uh, they don't have quite as much body just when they're like have a, a smaller shape like this, mm -hmm. at least in my experience. And this one, it's just made really well. It's a little heavier, so it's got a lot of uh, girth, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's... It's probably got a more feel, substantial piece of wood. Yeah, you poplar. feel it. You feel a lot more. It's a lot uh, bigger, you know, it has a more presence, uh, to me at least. So, cool. but yeah, I love it. It's a little beat up, you know, it's been, uh, been on the road a lot, been used a lot, so... But uh, it's, it's hanging in there. And uh, rocking the lace sensors, huh? Yeah, this is this is a company that we actually all use, uh, lace pickups, and they're great. They kind of approached us a while back, and um, I I didn't know a lot about pickups. I still don't really know a lot about pickups, but um, these drop in gains that me and Nick have both been using for a long time are just they sound really good. Um, you know, I think the big difference was that they don't use batteries, you know. So right. we were always, you know, before that we were using active pickups that used batteries. And um, it was just annoying to have to change them and stuff. And, you know, we got these and they sound great. And they don't use batteries or anything. Uh, they're passive and they're just, uh, they're really sharp, really clear. And the stuff we do at this point is like, you know, the less mud and the less stuff around the tone or whatever is better you know sure. everything sounds you need better kind that of way. a precision yeah it's got to yeah. cut through yeah. and like especially with everything we do we do a lot of stuff on single string so like you know the low e we're just kind of chugging on that a lot so you know you want that to be as as tight as yeah. possible so yeah they're great they Spe sound awesome speaking of low e i love i absolutely love that you guys follow the thrash tradition of tuning in standard yeah um is that something you've always done or you just didn't want to deviate kind from of that? yeah i mean we started doing it uh on when we put out our demo we were always doing that and then we went down to uh e flat for i think our first ep we did that in e flat and then just decided to come back up and yeah. then we, ever since then we've been in e and yeah people ask us all the time because they just can't figure it out you know like people will be playing our songs like I'm you know, in videos in there, just kind of like always going back to the second fret, you know, because they just can't like, you know, we, we play in E just to set the record straight. So, yeah, we just, I mean, it's just, I, I like the feeling of playing in standard tuning. I mean, it's not as easy to write uh, riffs in because, you know, when you're tuned lower, I think everything sounds a little heavier, you know yeah. what I mean? But I think that's maybe one thing that sets us apart. Not that we were the first band to play in of E course, standard, right. but, yeah. but, but not a lot of people do anymore for that reason, but uh, I think you can be really heavy and totally. That's what I was standard tuning. getting at. Like yeah. I've, I've had, you know, fights with my friends. It's like yeah. tuning to me <laughs> doesn't denote heavy. Right. It's, it's a rhythm part, like, yeah. you know, for me at least, I don't know, because exactly. I'm an old hardcore kid, so yeah. the rhythm for me is more important. But yeah. So E standard, but what, ga what gauges are you running on there? Oh yeah, so we play uh, 942s. These are Ernie Ball uh, super slinkies. And um, yeah, I mean, like I, we played in, we played on tens for a while, um, just because that was, you know, we Heavier. didn't know to go lighter. And then once we, I guess at some point, I had known about you know nine gauge strings. I knew some people that played on them. And then I met you know some older guys from different bands, like some like uh, one guy, uh, this guy Mike Dijon from Breakdown mm -hmm. and stuff, old hardcore bands. He was like really telling me to 
to go to nines. And then, you know, the more research I did, all the bands that we like and listen to, the old 80s bands and stuff, pretty much all played with light strings, especially this kind of stuff we do with the sure. riffs and everything. So we switched to nines, and ever since then, I just I can't see myself going back, back. now. Once you, you play tens now, and it's like, whoa, whoa, and then some guys play like 13s, you know, so. Yeah, but they can't be bending like you are. Yeah, I mean, like. You're wailing on that. Yeah, now, yeah, especially when you play, like, a lot of the guys, you know, like Gary and Exodus and guys that we've met, like, recently, they play, like, they might have a heavier gauge low because mm -hmm. they're in, like, a D standard or something, and then their, their high strings will be light. So totally. they'll have, like, you know. You bend on the high strings. Yeah, easier. like a, I think, like a 1052 or something or something. So, yeah, I mean, nines are just, they're a lot faster, and especially with the single string stuff and the tight, if you want it to sound as tight as possible, like nines are, zip. they sound really tight. Yeah. It, but all, all that being said, it also makes you play a little better because when they're that small, you gotta really kind of be precise or it's just gonna sound messy. Yeah, I guess you, you know? do have to kind of focus yeah. more on your hands, right. like in placement and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Well, cool. That's a beautiful guitar, man. And you got a backup that's almost identical, right? Yeah, it's uh, similar. This is uh, an RRMG, I believe. It's a Pro Series. Jackson, it's got the lace pickups in it, too. I put those in. And yeah, this is a great guitar. Uh, Jackson uh, were kind enough to give me this guitar. And because uh, I just, I only play Jackson. And it's great. It's just a really nice guitar. It's really well made. It's pretty, you know. Yeah. It hasn't gotten beat up yet, <laughs> thankfully. But uh, it almost has like a Jetsons vibe. Yeah, to it, it's cool. I, I just it. was like looking at the different ones, and I was like, this one looks interesting. And I just I love this pick guard. I, I like having that. It's like and uh, or something. Yeah. Yeah, they're cool. And I just I like how the pickups are kind of exposed. Um, but it's a great guitar. I, mm. I play it uh, at home. I play it. Sometimes, I mean, this is kind of my number one, but this is my backup. It's not a bad one to have. So sometimes if I don't feel like restringing this, I'll just play this one or sure. something. But yeah, it sounds great. It's really well made. It's a little different. It's got a different material on the neck loops. But uh, yeah, it's great. So this is my other one. Right it's on, good. right on. Yeah. And you're uh, running those bad boys through this 800 here, huh? Yep. Yeah, this is a... Uh, Quintessential metal amp. Yeah, this is a 1986 uh, 2203. Uh, GSM 800, and yeah, I mean, it's at this point, it's kind of the only amp I'll play, because right. it's just, um, it's very simple. Not only is it like a legendary, like classic amp, but it just, it's, it's huge sounding, it's loud as All good. hell, you yeah, know what I mean? It it's like, I play it on like two every night, so it's really loud, um, but it's just a great tone, and it, it uh, I actually got an effects loop added to it, because they didn't have those on the old mm -hmm. ones. I run some stuff through the effects loop, but um, it just sounds good. Like I was, you know, I was telling you earlier, like I don't have to use a noise suppressor because everything coming through that is, is it doesn't have a lot of gain on it. You know what I mean? It just has a preamp, so it's like there's no gain knobs or anything, so you don't have to deal with anything. You don't have to control anything. It's just it's pretty clean as it is, and then you can just you know throw a tube screamer yeah. or whatever on it, and and then combine with like some pickups that are quiet, like these lace dropping gains. Just it's just not noisy, yeah. so. But it just depends on how you run it. You know, if you max out your tube scream or whatever, then you're probably going to have to. You're probably yeah, gonna have to but totally. I, we don't use, I mean, compared to a lot of metal bands, we don't use that much gain. It's like, I mean, I think on, on that scale. Yeah, I would consider your, your tone a little more traditional metal than Yeah, modern, like, I mean, yeah. it's, you know, but to keep it clean and, you know what I mean, to kind of keep it tight, you can't do too much. And I don't know, yeah, just with this amp, it also kind of teaches you to play better because it's just, it's, unforgiving you know sure. you'll ask anybody that plays them and you know sometimes when you don't feel like trying it's kind of annoying but it makes you a better player when it, when you're on you're on you know what totally. I mean? it sounds really good so yeah, yeah you can't this, really cover up too much with all the game yeah but. at this point yeah we don't like to cover anything up at this point because we're just trying to you know if you when you play really t well on an amp like this it's just it sounds really good it's good to play badly it sounds bad yeah. but it keeps you honest you know so. and then did you get that cab with the with the head uh, I got them at different times. This is uh, 900. 900. Yeah, it's just a, you know I just like Marshall. I just it's would have always kind of played, and I, I I love them. But I like all kinds of sure you know, cabs and stuff. He's got a mace over there. But yeah, this is kind of what I've always played. I've always had the cab. I got this like I think maybe two three years ago, and played some different Marshalls before that. But pretty much always Marshall or something like that. So yeah. Do you know what speakers are in that? I don't. I'm not very, <laughs> I'm not very well versed in all that, but but they're they sound good. It's been a long time that. since I had one. Yeah. I think it, mine had vintage 30s or something. Yeah, in there, yeah. something but, like that. Yeah. You know. Cool. Well, right yeah. on, man. I guess that takes us to Pedaland, which is okay. 
Chris and I were, were yeah. talking, I was explaining to Chris that like, I don't suspect them to have too, too many pedals. We don't, we yeah. don't have a lot. We have some, but there's a story to tell with some of them, so. Well, dude, I'm excited to hear the stories about these pedals, but first, can I hear just the amp? Yep. Just straight amp. <laughs> Pickups yeah. really are quiet. Yeah, like when you're they're, done, you're done. That's quiet. crazy. And then they're, you know. So, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. actually hella gain. So, are you yeah. using the Tube Screamer just for yeah. solos? Yeah, I mean, no, I use that. That's on all the time. So, I mean, that's just, that's, that's the sound. It's just the 800. I got the preamp Crank. cranked. Yeah. Um, little, so, you know, some mids. I actually have my mids a little higher lately just to have that extra presence or whatever. Yeah. Um, bass kind of on like 5.6, presence on like 7.8. Not too much trouble, like six or seven on that. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just a tube screamer, you know? Yeah. Just that with the drive on like six, everything on six, and it's enough for us, you know? Yeah. Some people might need more than that, but for us, it's perfect. So. Works out. Yeah. yeah. All right, so what else we got over here? Obviously, you got a polytune. Yeah, I got the polytune, you know, cool tuner. It's really accurate. Um, next, this is the Line 6 G70. It's like our uh, wireless system. And we all got them at the same time. They've been pretty great. I haven't had any issues with them. You just have like a pack and you just, it oh. tells you how much battery life you have left in your pack. And I mean, it's been a long time since I played with a wireless unit and I noticed yeah. when I was a kid and I had wireless, it kind of sucked the signal away a little bit. Do, yeah. do you notice that with that? No, I, you know, I was always kind of like, didn't want to get one because one, you just, you know, if you're not at a certain, I guess, level, you know, like a, you're not a touring, like you have a wireless, you just look kind of like, really, you know? You yeah. <laughs> but know. Um, at some point it just became like, efficient for us to have them because you know we're like loading in loading out really quickly running off stage running on stage so yeah this we, is compact you could just yeah we just decided we were like fine we'll get them and we got a good deal on them and they're supposed to be like the best rated ones i guess that you can kind of buy now you know that's yeah. not like a rack mount unit i've so. actually heard great stuff about them yeah, yeah no they've been good we all love them so i haven't noticed any tone sucking or anything like that so cool. we've been pretty happy with those um this is a uh, this is my delay pedal which I use for all my leads. It's a uh, old Ibanez DE7, and uh, it's like a delay echo pedal. <laughs> and I don't like I don't really know a lot about them. Basically, our producer slash uh, you know good friend, also fill in Arthur Rizik, the guy that recorded our records. He's like you know a big guitar guy and he collects pedals and stuff. And he actually turned me on to this. Because I had been trying to find like a lead pedal to, you know, for my solos. Because I, you know, a lot of the reverbs and the delays you'll find that you run through a chain are kind of noisy and abrasive, you know. Mm. And th this is more of like a well, I don't know how it would sound in the chain. I always run it through the effects loop, and that's why I got the amp modded. modded but yeah. it just has that kind of '80s, you know, um, it's kind of like a cavernous like '80s delay. It's just cool. So yeah, well, I dude, was, kick was, it on. Yeah, I was, you know. It's trying to mess with reverbs and then that gets really messy. Gets so washy, you really yeah. just need the delay, but. So. Man, squealing horses, man. I His love it. His hands are cold. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um, yeah, no, it's a great pedal. I don't know. I don't. I'm sure there's others out there that are good, but this was just the one that was shown to me. So uh, that's what I've gone with. But it sounds good, and it's cheap. I think you can get them on eBay for like 60, bucks, 70 bucks. I think when I got this one, it was a few years ago. It was like 40 bucks. They've maybe they're a little boutique now, but um, yeah, I love that pedal. Um, and then this is just a loop station, which is has like uh, you can program a bunch of samples and. Yeah, delays oh. like you can uh, are you doing the opening to the record yeah, yeah like we have cool. all like we have a lot of like sounds on our record that like our you know producer helped make and stuff like that like transitions and stuff mm -hmm. so i'll play like our intro on that and you can just pro you can record them straight from like a auxiliary input so oh, wow. i just recorded them all onto there and you know you can loop station so you can create your own sounds and loop them and stuff like that too but i just have all our stuff programmed in there so i just kind of throughout the set i'll turn it on and turn it off and 
it's nice because it just runs straight into the house and then we can play them all like that. Oh, so. you just go right to the front of the house? Yeah, rather than like having to give them like an iPod or something. Yeah, so. no, totally. Yeah, so that's pretty much it well, man, for that's me. pretty lean and mean, but it does the trick. It sounds yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. We, we don't have a lot of crazy stuff. I used to, I use a wall at times, but that's not really our thing anymore. Yeah, so I get that's, that. that's pretty much it. Well, dude, yeah. lean and mean, I love it. Yeah, we'll talk sure. to the rest of the guys in the band. Cool. So excited for the show. Um, Thanks. Right on. All right, now we're on the other side of the stage over here with Chris Wetzel. Chris, my homie, what's up, dude? What's up, dude? First and foremost, we got to talk about these Donnables because they're radical. Yeah, man. Love them. Man, those are awesome. Love them. Uh, yeah, Sacha's been great. He uh, Actually, this was the first one he built for me. Um, they're both loaded with lace pickups. It's a, it's a Dunnable R2. That's the name of it. It's a cool looking pickup. Yeah. yeah, yeah, chrome. Got a little, little bling on there. Yeah. For those of you guys that aren't super familiar with Dunnable, Sasha plays an Intronaut, which is an awesome band, and makes guitars. And he actually just won a Premier Gear Award from, from our magazine because yeah. the Cyclops was such a good build, man. Yeah. You know, it's great. Yeah, and that guitar is awesome. beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's kind of a funny story. I had a, a P bass. Um, we had an incident where some stuff fell out of the back of the trailer, lost some guitars, and uh, I had a 75 Ibanez Challenger. It was a really cool guitar. Uh, bass guitar and it was this kind of like old cream color with uh, mint pit guard so I hit up oh, Sacha cool. yeah I hit up Sacha last minute for tour and was like dude I need another bass and he he replaced that bass so yeah, uh, yeah that thing's lean and mean god I love yeah. the knobs that he uses too it's so, yeah they're great so man. cool and this it's is stuff. pretty much an identical backup right pretty much the same thing it also just a la lace uh, Aluma P's is what they're called um, really good Really nice pickups, um, got a little bit of a grit to them. Um, but other than that, pretty much the same. I mean, same guitar, same bass. Yeah. A little heavier. Uh, one thing I love about th this Dunnable too is that like, even though the shape is offset, mm -hmm. it's not top heavy. Right, like, yeah. It feels so balanced. Oh, I will say this was a 34 inch scale and then he switched it to a 35 inch scale. Oh, really? On some of his new ones. So Does that throw that's you the off? Only, uh, all, huh? No, no, I was yeah. fine. It was no problem. Yeah. And yeah. those are gorgeous, and I love this color, man. It's so yeah. smoky. Yeah. I dig it. Yeah, he kills it, man. He's, he's great. He does a really good job. Um, Absolutely. And otherwise, you're running pretty mean and lean. That's yeah, it's Pro. pretty simple. Yeah, 7 Pro, just because it's rack mountable and it's easy. It gives me enough power. Um, Sonic Maximizer. The which, 482, not the pedal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, uh, it really adds some, some, some beef to the tone. Um, man, how are you running that? Yeah, you got that. Through my effects loop, cool. and then, I mean, you, you've, I've got them Pank. seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got them cranked. That's cool. Um, aside from that, I run a 610. It seems to have a little bit tighter sound. Hmm. It's a little, you know, a little, it's not so open. Like yeah. an 810 has a really open Woofy sound. Kind of yeah, thing, yeah, exactly. Another uh, thing is those things are a lot easier to take around. It is, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's considerably smaller. That's cool. Um, yeah, pretty simple. I run a tube screamer. Oh, a little mini guy. Um, little mini tube screamer. Cliff Burton ran one, mm -hmm. and uh, it's kind of like I just needed a little. Was that staying on pretty much all the time? Yeah, yeah. I ran clean tone for a few years, but I just needed a little grit. It kind of cuts through with the guitar. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It a little bit. It, it, yep. And then um, the bass pre. Are you leaving that on pretty much all the time? Yeah, I just leave that on once again. Just uh, I actually. Sans amp went with the other guitars when they fell out of the back of the oh, trailer bummer. in our incident. Yeah. Um, and at the time, I just needed a quick replacement and went with that little uh, MXR bass preamp. Cool. And it's doing the job. So. You also running the relay? Yeah, the we picked those up earlier this year, and um, we've taken them on three three tours now, and uh, they've they've done us well. They've yeah. been they've been good. Man, I love it. Lean and mean. Yeah. That's pretty much yeah, all there is to it. Pretty huh? simple, yeah. Um, I gotta say, the guitars are, you know, the the bite in my rig. This is this is it's my shit. Yeah, man, they're beautiful. <laughs> I I love how just ridiculous they look too. They're so yeah. space age yeah. looking or something, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sasha's always coming up with some cool shapes. Well yeah. dang dude, um I guess uh we'll get out of here and Oh yeah. Uh, but I'm so excited for tonight. I'm really wait. hoping you play Crucifixation because I can barely keep my call on the road when that, shit, when, that, when that breakdown hits, man. It's Might like one of my favorite things that. in the world. So Good deal. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks, brother. Yeah. All right. Now we're all the way stage left with Mountain of a Man. Nick, what is up, dude? <laughs> What's up, man? <laughs> How How's are you? Going, man? Good, man. Great to see you. Great to see you. Um, also, running pretty mean and lean, except for your rig is a little bit different here. Yeah. Um, 
I'd say the main difference is probably, uh, since I play in rhythm guitar the whole time, uh, I'd say I use a little more mids. Um, I, think, I think Blake's tone's a little brighter uh, since he's playing leads more. So I like to kind of beef it up in the mm -hmm. background, you know, Fitting kind up. of kind of mix that together. So um, obviously just a different amp. Um, yeah, that Richie Blackmore is sick. Yeah, so funny thing about this, I I uh, didn't have a clue really about Ingle amps. I bought this because I heard it that the two-channel amp sounded good, but this is the only two-channel amp I saw at the time. So I had never played one, and I just bought it. And you just bought it? I just bought it. You didn't even play it? Yeah, I played, no. I played wow. a 5150 forever. Yeah, I Because it was that. just like, you know, Me you too, play those yeah. when, you're, when you're, you know, it's like kind of a go-to. I've bought and sold probably three of them and wish I didn't every yeah. time. I have, I still have <laughs> still one. Yeah, cool. I don't play it, but I mean, it's like it's if something were to play. happen, I could yeah. use it, you know. But, um, but yeah, I, I picked this up and uh, actually, I, I wasn't the first person that played this amp. It was uh, Spike from DRI. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Dirty uh, Rock. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, wow, that uh, seems like a, a higher gain amp than they'd be going for almost. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think he was just using it for the night or something like that. But he, yeah, anyways. But so did you buy it online or something? How yeah, did you, oh, okay, I bought cool. it on eBay. Um, kind of shot in the dark kind of thing. Got lucky. And now I've just like, I have kind of feel like it's just the the tone that I have now and I've kind of used to it and um, are you I, also it, recording with it we recorded with it cool. yeah we record well we recorded some things with it and the 800 but um, yeah I bet together those sounds yeah yeah really yeah, nice, yeah it's pretty cool but um, yeah there's not much to it it's two channel amp I play on the obviously the, the lead channel the yeah. lead channel um, it's pretty straightforward it's I basically have a master gain and then like the the lead channel I keep up uh, Oh, it's got a presence like a 5152. I like. Yeah, that. yeah. it's very similar. Yeah. It's very similar. Um, oh yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, right on. Uh, yeah, so the main thing is like, I kind of, I kind of maybe have my bass a little more, maybe a little more mids. Um, no clean at all. No, you're I never don't use that. Clean, right? uh, no. What's that for? Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, that rolls. <laughs> mm. and is this like an inline buffer or something up here? What do we got? Oh yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this is a, it's a master volume. That's really what it is. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, that's cool. This thing, I had it biased when I had the tubes replaced recently, and my guy's really good, but he biased it really hot, so it's so Too fucking hot. loud. If I can't cuss, I'm sorry. No, you can. <laughs> it's so loud that I can't run it on stage volume without this master volume. Oh wow! So I'm gonna attenuate it down a little bit. Yeah. Right? So this is a JHS little black box. Yeah, thank you, JHS. Yeah. For, uh, That's a handy dandy uh, tool there. Yeah, it's nice. It's kind of subtle. It chills back there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just use that. I keep the volume up high on here, like at five, almost a little under five. And then you're really dialing it with the. And then I dial it in with this because I used to have to crank it low, down to like one or two. And one time we were outside playing a show, and the guy was like, "I can't even put you in the system because it's too loud." It's too loud. So huh? that was wow. the end of that. Yeah, but, well, um, that, yeah, and that's way smaller than like a Marshall power break or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's super, nice. nobody even notices yeah, it. Yeah, it's very It kind of just stays back there, but... Um, and then obviously that's running 6L6s, right? Yeah, oh no, actually I think these are EL34s. Really? Yeah. Interesting. So it's a little different, but uh, my first time to ever play these, but yeah, I've been playing though. this thing for a while, so... You know, some of the newer, uh, I guess, the, I don't know if they're called 5150s anymore, but the EVH versions have, you can get... 6L6s or EL34s, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Yeah, I, the, I have 6L6s in the, uh, in the 5150. Yeah, sure. of course, like the standard yeah. ones. But uh, it still uses 12AX7 preamp tubes. So that's the same as the sure. you know, PV amps or whatever. But Yeah, I heard your sound check and it sounded gnarly. Yeah, Very, thanks. very great tone. It's, it's pretty, uh, I don't know, man. There's something about this amp. I just got lucky on it. So now I'm trying to get another one. Um, like a, for a backup? No, nah, so we came out with an artist series recently. I think it's just kind of a more beefed up version. Don't quote me on this, but I haven't played one yet. Mm -hmm. But what I've read about is it's kind of a more beefed up version of the Blackmore. So it's the same style, it's a two channel. Um, so I'm working on trying to get one of those right now. Angle. Angle, what's up with that? <laughs> the rules. Uh, and then you're running into this Mesa. Yeah, so it's standard Mesa Boogie 412. Vintage 30s, uh, vintage 30s man. Cool. Um, Great speaker for heavy music, man. Yeah, so I have a Mesa as well, just like Blake. I have, or I mean, I'm sorry, Marshall just like Blake, just the lead 1960 cab. I got one of these and I felt like it was a little, for me, it had a more of a little, kind of more mid-range to it. I was gonna say I have both and I've had both. I still have a Mesa cab and mm -hmm. it definitely has like more of a mid bump than the- A little more mid-range. Yeah, and I think, warmer. 
I think I, now I love the Marshalls. They sound amazing. I have, like I said, I have one. But I think for what we're doing, sure, uh, he's got one. You he's got one. I kind of want to make it a little bit different, yeah. kind of like blend the rhythm in better with the leads. So I think that it, for me, what we're doing, this works better. Yeah. Um, and then really, the only effect you're running is yeah. that little tube screamer. Huh? Something about me. Uh, <laughs> you're just, this is what this is what it is right here, guys. Uh, nothing. Nothing right special. To the point. Straight to the point. I have a. Uh, is that I a decimator? Had a decimator pedal. Uh, I just put it about 500. Leave it on. Leave it on. Doesn't I don't mess with it. You don't feel like it sucks your tone? No. Uh, actually, I really like these. I had a, you know, the old Boss like NS2 or whatever the, it's called. Oh yeah. yeah. Not my. Not not a fan of those. They definitely. Yeah. Definitely I'm, suck your tone for sure. It's funny. I've seen more decimators for as far as like you know. I uh, think for a noise gate, I don't know yeah. what what's better out there to be honest. I mean, the rack mounts are apparently like the the mecca sure. of, of them all. But uh, yeah, I mean, for a noise gate, it's definitely definitely solid. We all use the same tuners. Uh, Smart. It seems like as, as the years go by, a company comes out with a better one and then the next company comes out with one. So we started with like Boss and then, sure. you know, they're, they're, I like them because of the, uh, of the polytune feature that actually has been able to strum all the, all six strings and it'll see if, you're in tune. see if you're in tune. That's killer. Also, it's pretty visible. I love that you can see yeah, that bad boy. Yeah, it, very much so. Yeah. Um, this Tube Screamer here, I only use if we play like 800s out of town or if like we have, oh. a, we have to rent a rig so or something. So if you're in Europe or something like that, you yeah, can we're take in Europe, that board. I use the same thing he does. It's, I just use a the TS9 Mini. And, just uh, hit the front of the amp a little and bit. And it's just like, it yeah, I just kind of crank it on the JCM 800 yeah. and then just put you know put a little more into it with this but I don't even you guys can just pretty much blur this out completely I don't <laughs> it's even just not on right now that's not yeah. a that's not a real thing yeah. really so um, yeah and then I just run a G70 line 6 like everybody else they've been very reliable so sure. far I've heard great things about them and I've got no complaints uh, so that's a uh, you know pretty straightforward rig and then but, you turn with this Gibson yeah so this is like this is what I really like more than anything, I guess. It's very uh, pretty. Yeah, this is uh, this is my baby. I just I've had her for a couple years now. Um, also running the lace sensors. Lace sensors. Yeah, I kind of stumbled across them and uh, got these guys into them. So if they told you that they figured them out first, it wasn't. That's not <laughs> that was not uh, the case. Uh. No, but uh, yeah, I run the lace uh, dropping gains just like them. Um, you know, I find that. There's a little more clarity in these than the EMG pickups. They're not as muddy, and there's and it's way less hiss. So when yeah, you're, I'm having to noise. I'm having to stop all the time. So uh, it definitely helps in that mm. that category for sure. But uh, yeah, I uh, basically had this black uh, Gibson Explorer for a long time, and uh, it was run over on the freeway. Damn, out of the trailer. Out of the trailer. Bummer. And. Uh, I wish I had it with me. It's back in working order, and I play. Oh, you had it repaired? Yeah, it's crazy. It's been. It was broken in four places. So the neck. It was broken here, 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 and here. And he and, they, and he fixed it. Yeah. Wow. It's it was crazy. That's I wish crazy. I had it with me, but I don't. I have this other one, but um, it's not buzzy or anything. No, it's incredible. Wow. It's like a horse, man. That's crazy. And uh, I just brought this. I brought the other one with me this time because it was. Uh, newer but yeah this thing's great man it's like old reliable i kind of this is like kind of a dream guitar for me i always wanted the karina and the karinas mm -hmm. are like you know ten thousand dollars or whatever yeah. i don't know so i like the natural a lot i thought it was the closest thing i could get threw a black pit guard on i had a white one but yeah, uh, I think it looks good with the black it yeah. just plays really fast man mm -hmm. and uh i've always ever since i've been doing an explorer body i can't really play anything else yeah. so I've noticed uh, as far as offset gu guitars go, like Blake obviously has some crazy shapes, but I can never practice with them because they, like, right. where do you put it unless you're playing like classical? I know, yeah. yeah that's, but this is normal. It almost feels like yeah, a Yeah, it's kind of just a classic feel, you know? Um, I mean, shit, watch James Hadfield, mm. you know, back in the day, and still, he still plays these sometimes, so I don't he's know, like man. He's with ESP now, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. I'm actually about to get a uh, the 84 reissue that Gibson did of the white. The white explorer, That's so cool. I don't know. I'm gonna collect them all or something. Yeah, I don't man. know. But Pokemon. This thing's great, man. So yeah, it's beautiful. Thanks. Man, I'll stop Taylor Bridge. 
kind of does the trick, huh? Yeah, it's just simple. Cool. It's very simple. I'm a simple guy, man. Just play. I appreciate Turn that. it on and play and then turn it off and go home, you know. <laughs> the rules. I don't know. And then, you know, if you don't like it, I don't really care. Yeah, who cares? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, right on, man, Nick. This has yeah. been a pleasure. I'm yeah, so man. excited to see you guys rip yeah, on tonight. Man, yeah, for sure. Yeah, thanks a lot. This is Perry with Premier Guitar, another rig rundown. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.